I was adopted into this family that I that I'm not, that they that I'm now chief of. When I got to the village, they they danced me around the fire, and I got a name. They held me up, and they told the people that he is one of us. My father was a chief. My mother was high ranking. And the old people in their ways wanted that union just to keep the traditions going. Then I was trained by, by those same old people, groomed um, to learn the ways, to learn the language. I thought they were doing that to all the kids, but they weren't. I was learning how to carve and I was learning the language. And when I was just little, we had this book from UBC, the Hawthorne Book of Quagilt Art, it was called. My grandmother would daily go through this book. When you get older, you're gonna carve these for us. They belong, this mask belongs to your dad. It's now in the museum. And I'm five, six when it started. We'd go through that book. This one belongs to us, our side of the family. This one belongs to so-and-so. And, -so. and um, that was just what I learned. My mother couldn't have children. I had found out later because my parents didn't talk about their experiences that um, my mother, when she cr contracted tuberculosis, she was sent to the Nanaimo um, Indian Hospital, TB Hospital. And in there, I had found out to my horror that they um, experimented on them medically and um, sterilized all of them. And uh, I didn't know that. That's where I come in. I was taught to carve and to sing, to dance and all those things. And and still looking at that book and understanding that this belongs to you. And I was downloaded information about um, the songs and dances on both sides of my family and other families that were close to us. And all of those things that I was asked, I was asked to carve, I did carve. I feel really proud because the masks that I was asked to replicate are were hung with the originals. My replications and the originals were all under the same roof in the Camp River Museum. And um, the grandparents stood with the grand grandchildren and the masks were really happy and so we were we. They had brought me in to tell their story and to rebuild. I had been working on it all along with them. That was the amazing part. We weren't victims anymore. I was their hope of the future. Nine out of 10 of us died in smallpox. 10% that was left was thrown in the schools. They lost their kids. They lost the land. They lost their language, they lost their regalia, they lost everything. Because this was a systemic thing, I think right across the country, every last nation in their own way had to groom and to keep it going forward. And this was just all hardcore survival stuff. 
So every chief of my age, I believe, went through that.